The human mind is terrifying sometimes. It is at once a complex system of magically coalescing aspects and yet a delicate balance waiting to be destabilized. Those destabilizations often lead to mental illnesses, which are defined as states of abnormal behavior that go on for an extended amount of time, impact the affected individual's behavior, and cause a burden slash anguish in the affected. As something many people suffer from, and that has grown increasingly in terms of awareness and research, mental illness has often been thematized in fictional writing. While some takes on it are more accurate and valuable than others, it is nonetheless interesting to look into how it is portrayed and developed in fictional works. As is often the case on my channel, I would like to look towards Hiroiko Araki's hit manga Jojo's Bizarre Adventure for this. In a previous video, we already mentioned how the series is full of characters suffering from various mental ailments, ranging from parental complexes to dissociative identity disorder. This time, however, I would like to look at the evil lurking in the shadows of Morio, part 4's violent serial killer and main villain, Yoshikage Kira. Now, let's do a quick rundown of Kira's personality and actions before we get into the meat of things. Yoshikage Kira, aged 33, is an average, upper-middle-class office worker who lives in an uneventful, peaceful life in the quiet town of Morio, Japan. He is relatively skilled at sports, but not as much as to excel, and he maintains friendly, albeit distant, relationships to his co-workers. His lifestyle could overall be defined as mundane, normal, peaceful. But that is only what he wants you to know and think. Underneath his average facade lies a cunning, manipulative, and rather intelligent man whose desires are anything but ordinary. Ever since his youth, he harbored an attraction towards female hands, a trait that took a dark twist as it first turned into a sexual fetish and then into a violent love of murdering women and becoming romantically involved with their severed hands. However, what Yoshika Akira wants the most is to be able to live his quiet life quietly and remain undisturbed as he goes about his normal routine and satisfies his urges. To live and kill without interruption, to disappear into the society he terrorizes, to live a quiet life. That is Yoshikage Kira's deepest desire. Already, we have a lot to dig into, but before we do any of that, a necessary disclaimer. This video will utilize real psychological facts to analyze and approximate the fictional mental state of a fictional character. This is done for the sake of interest and entertainment and will, inevitably, include generalization, simplification, and speculation. Mental illness, however, is a very real issue, and you cannot, and should not, use anything I say in this video as a conclusive diagnosis or process for real people. Additionally, not everyone who suffers from the disorders we theorize here is a violent serial killer. Mental disorders come at varying strengths and sizes and expressions, and more often than not, people that suffer from them are harmless to those around them. Please keep this in mind, and please don't play home psychologist after watching this video. With that out of the way, let's dive in. Kira's case is actually kind of complicated to completely understand. He is generally referred to as a psychopath. However, contrary to popular belief, this term essentially means nothing, and is not sanctioned by any psychological authority. But, lucky for us, we are not completely clueless. The Diagnostic and Statistic Manual of Mental Disorders, aka the DSM, aka the most important manual of psychology, states that the colloquial term psychopathy is most often associated with Antisocial Personality Disorder, or APD. In 2016, the staff at Mayo Clinic, Rochester, Minnesota, defined APD as a long-term pattern of disregard for or violation of the rights of others and a low moral sense. Furthermore, individuals that suffer from APD will often exploit and manipulate others while putting up a facade of superficial charm and social competence. More importantly, they may display arrogance, negative thoughts towards others, and a general lack of remorse for their actions. Also, they can often be incredibly aggressive and impulsive, lashing out violently at provocations. So far, so Kira, as this seems to fit him very nicely. 
Murdering someone is, pretty much, the definition of violating the rights of others and low moral sense. And, as his public persona shows, he definitely can put up a manipulative, superficial facade while showing a heaping helping of arrogance and a severe lack of remorse and regret. Plus, he does indulge in violent outbursts when cornered and admonished, as seen with Koichi. However, while these aspects do fit him, many of the other core signs of APD do not. For example, one core element of APD is irresponsibility and difficulty to maintain routines like employment and relationships. While Kira is indeed single, he seems to have no trouble keeping up with his work and, more importantly, he loves his routines and rigid schedules and fulfills them diligently and responsibly. So, is APD off the table? Well, not really. Psychology isn't math, and an individual suffering from a disorder does not have to necessarily display every single recorded symptom of it, just enough to make a diagnosis possible. So, considering how much actually aligns between Kira and this disorder, Kira having some form of antisocial personality disorder seems likely. Okay, so is this it then? Not quite. The real horror of mental illness isn't necessarily that any one of them is particularly bad, even though some are genuinely horrifying, but rather that they often bring a friend. In many cases, a patient is diagnosed with multiple disorders that affect and often worsen each other. And APD only really explains the discrepancy between Kira's public self and his real self, but not actually the contents of that real personality. For that, we need to turn to another disorder. What immediately comes to mind for me is Obsessive Compulsive Disorder, or OCD. You might be surprised to see this here, as commonly OCD is often depicted as just nitpicky perfectionism, for example getting annoyed at a picture frame not hanging correctly. This is, however, a wrong understanding of the ailment, or at least a wrong exaggeration. While perfectionism does play into it, OCD is much more extreme than just being nitpicky and pedantic. Like the name says, it's obsessive and compulsive, meaning that you develop a routine of actions you feel forced to do for no real reason, called compulsion, and or have thoughts that repeat and repeat themselves in your head and take up all of your thinking capacity, called obsessions. There are weaker forms of it, absolutely. But at full power, it's as if every fiber of your being needs you to do something in a certain way or needs you to achieve get something for you to feel at peace. One common and relatively harmless occurrence, at least at first, is when people develop a compulsion to clean their hands over and over, even when clean. OCD fits Kira incredibly well. In almost every scene he's in, he follows some sort of compulsion or obsession. For starters, his rigidly planned daily routine can be seen as a compulsion, as he seems visibly disturbed at the thought of not being able to go through with his rituals. He cuts and documents his nails and the growth meticulously, he buys lunch from the same store every day, etc etc etc. He even exhibits some of that cartoony behavior we mentioned earlier, for example when he gets upset at Koichi wearing his socks wrong and goes as far as to correct it after he supposedly killed him. While not an entirely accurate depiction of compulsion, it does contain elements of it and can be seen as an indication of it by the author. But more crucially, obsessions can also be of violent and sexual nature, leading the affected to feel a need for certain violent and sexual acts. This falls somewhat in line with how Kira develops an obsession with women's hands, which then combines with a violent tendency into compulsion to kill, feeling uneasy and restless when he doesn't get to do it. And the sexual nature of these compulsions and obsessions is shown very nicely during the bedroom scene with Shinobu. When his wife begins undressing before him, Kira gets, understandably, aroused. However, his first instinctual expression of his arousal is, according to him, to strangle Shinobu. Thus, it is evident that Kira has a deep-rooted compulsion to use violence as a sexual outlet. One last thing to consider regarding compulsion is his meticulous cataloging of his nail growth. It might be an expression of his compulsive routine, but it is also clear that he seems to associate his nails with his urge to kill, which might be a different disorder altogether, but there simply isn't enough to conclusively say or follow up on that, so let's just put it under compulsions right now. Alright, 
so we can make a pretty solid argument that Kira suffers from both antisocial personality disorder and obsessive compulsive disorder. So now, what's left to discuss is how exactly he became this way. Mental health issues are difficult to trace back to any one origin, but generally it is often a safe bet to assume that the underlying catalyst appeared during childhood or puberty. It is, after all, a very crucial period in the development of the psyche, so any number of incidents or situations can have profound effects on a person's inner workings for the future. However, it's here when it gets pretty difficult. Araki isn't exactly someone who spends a lot of time on backstories, and Kira's is… well, almost non-existent. But we do get a couple of breadcrumbs that we can extrapolate into a few educated guesses. From the trip into Kira's house, we get to see that his facade has been going on for a long time. The multiple second and third place trophies implying that he had been hiding for a long time before the series even started. More importantly though, thanks to his visit, we know that he had been cataloging his nail growth at least since 1983, at which point Kira would have been 17 years old. But thanks to his father, Yoshihiro Kira, we get an indication that his nail growth has been going on for much longer, as even as a child, Kira would bite his nails and fingers bloody when frustrated. As for his murderous tendencies, we know that Kira killed Reimi Sugimoto when she was 16. She was babysitting a 4 year old Rohan at the time. Since Rohan is 20 years old during the events of part 4, Kira's supposed first murder happened when he was 17, the same age at which he began cataloging his nails. Additionally, from Kira's final monologue, we are told that he first discovered his attraction to hands when he was barely a boy, only marginally able to get an erection. Thus, I believe it is possible to say that the catalysts for Kira's mental decline are located as early as between the ages of 5 and 10, with him finally snapping at 17. So now we know the when, but not the why. And frankly, it is basically impossible to know. His father, Yoshihiro, was someone who supported his son's murders and even gave him a stand to be able to do it better. So perhaps that indicates a cruel lack of empathy and care for human life, which were values that Kira was already confronted with from a young age. Or perhaps Yoshihiro was a criminal himself. But as things stand, we simply cannot know and we have just too little things to go off of to form any sort of convincing argument there. So I think it ends here. And this is pretty much it. In conclusion, we have argued that Yoshika Kira suffers from a mixed case of antisocial personality disorder and obsessive compulsive disorder, both of which seem to have emerged during his young childhood and both completely expressing themselves in his behavior after the age of 17. This might or might not have been the consequence of his upbringing at the hands of a father who seems unconcerned with the lives of others. But that's it for me. Thank you all for watching and take care. Have a wonderful holiday season. Bye bye. See you next time.